of shooting. Everyone who was uh, part of the cast and the crew um, did like a hundred dollars a day, which is insane. Still haven't seen it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jim, it was not paper, it wasn't written, it was uh, <laughs> verbal, very verbal. Actually, I think Jim tore up his check, which was a big help. So, um, a lot of our actors tore up their checks. So, I mean, really, it was just like, um, it was like a family for four days. We cranked out an airport and, you know, a hotel conference hotel. In a, inside a hotel room and stuff. So, um, yeah, and then uh, since then, we've just been, like, trying to get out to festivals, off the ground, and uh, we got in touch with Gravitas Distribution. They saw the film, and, and they wanted to get behind it, and so um, that cool. was a, that's that been a big part for it getting out to the world. And so, talking about the production end of it, uh, Mitch, also one of the producers on it, well, uh, what was the, aside from working with me, what was the hardest part about working on the project? That was it. It was that. <laughs> uh, what was the hardest out of you? Because because uh, dealing with the low budget, you know, uh, you're shooting at the Burbank Airport. Uh, what's the hardest part about working on this thing? Yeah, I mean, look, it was shoot, it was it was putting a a, a one day budget on a four day shoot. Um, that was difficult. Um, you know, and when you when you when they came to me with the script, and you know, we're looking at a at a convention center, and we're looking at an airport. And they were like, you know, well, should we like leave the airport in? Should we take it out? And I was like, no, 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 leave it in. We'll do it. We'll do it. And then I'm like, oh shit, what did I just do? <laughs> um, but no, I mean, you know, the hardest part was definitely the budget and, and the schedule. Uh, you know, we could have used five or six days, um, but uh, you know, we had an amazing crew. We had an amazing cast. I mean, you know, everyone was nailing their jobs. Yeah. So the hardest part was getting there. Absolutely, absolutely. Now let's talk to some of these cast members. Uh, first of all, Avery. Clyde, who uh, damn killed it is, every time I see it, kills it, kills it, love it, love it. This is a uh, this is a pretty uh, this is a, a bit of a personal story for you. So how did that how was that working on uh, something? Really? Well, <laughs> semi personal. I mean, it's 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 heavy. And then when you 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 dealt with it and you have to portray it, I mean, what's uh, what's that process like? I thought all the homework was all done. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah it was all prepared. As an actor, you know what I mean? Like there, there's so many levels to that mm -hmm. um, and to have walked through that you just you know every corner every little nook and cranny of the world of that and as an actor usually you're just you're just researching your butt off you know you're just trying to find and mine and mine and mine um, but with this there was a good chunk of it the the sperm donor stuff like uh, the black market part of it I didn't know um, and ran into Joe Donor on Facebook his name's uh, Joe Donor. His name is Joe Donor. Wow. Uh, Very and, subtle. Uh, oh, he's been in communication with us now, even. You know, wow. he's promoting the movie. And uh, and I remember that day I, I looked at you and, and uh, after I had talked to him on Facebook Messenger. And uh, it was like that was the moment that I got it. Like what, what, she, what she went through. Like what it would be like for her to meet Derek for real. You know, talking to him and him saying he had a Superman life, and at that moment he was Clark Kent, so he couldn't really talk to me again until Thursday, right? And it, that was like, this is this is this is real. This is happening right now. And then the movie took a whole another leap, you know, where right. it was like, okay, this is this is happening around the corner to real people in real time with real Joe donors, and I I, I just was uh, uncomfortable and uh, scared because that an anonymous person knew me, you know? Right. And I, that, once you feel that, then you've got it, you know? And from there, it just kind of played out. It was like, okay, I have all the information and I know that, I know what she's feeling when he walks in the room. And then the rest of it just kind of played itself. You're so good in this. Uh, <laughs> can, can I make a comment as a physician? I Absolutely. Just think that this, there's so, the emotions that surround this problem, this, this epidemic, are as real as anything else in medicine or in life. So if you take, if you take, it's getting a little serious, you get quality of life instruments that look at cancer survivors, and you, and I did this, I gave it to my fertility patients, and I said, this isn't designed for you, it's designed for cancer, but I asked things like, if you could take five years off, how many years of, off your life would you take if you could be, if you could have a child? Because cancer patients typically five to seven, they would they would give five to seven years of their life to be cured of cancer. Same for infertility. Same, no different. 
there still aren't tools designed for this, but my gut from my life in, in medicine is that it's the same. There's no difference. Death, infertility, cancer, same. And these are the, these are the root emotions that you see, and they're, they're very typical. It's amazing. Wow. There we go.